foreclosure defense attorney and legal blogger Roy Oppenheim from the trenches. How are you? I want to go over with you what we're seeing uh, in foreclosure jurisprudence uh, in 2017 in terms of uh, now that we've entered the second quarter of the year. And uh, the first thing I can tell you is that foreclosure practice is, is probably one of the more dirty practices that, that, that we have seen uh, probably in, in the practice of, uh, of my 30 years as, as an attorney. Uh, it sometimes reminds me a little bit of, of what people say uh, water polo is like, that, that a lot of the dirty stuff that goes on goes on under the water and you really, really don't see it. And I want to give you two real examples of, of why a foreclosure defense practice is really like trial by fire. Uh, the appellate courts uh, in, in the past few weeks have, have come down with, with two very, very interesting and disturbing, very disturbing uh, decisions. Uh, one particularly deals with hearsay, basically saying that uh, servicer B from a, from a mortgage can actually testify as it relates to servicers A business records. Anywhere else, anywhere else in the court of law, uh, uh, that would be considered not just single hearsay, but double hearsay. And uh, basically, uh, you can have a servicer uh, who has been servicing your mortgage actually say that, that the first servicer uh, handled your records properly, and there are only a, a few nominal things that that second servicer has to say and do, and you have these professional robo-witnesses out there who know exactly what to say. And so it's really unfortunate, because there's no other area, whether it was personal injury or criminal law, that that kind of testimony would ever make it in, into the system. So it, it, it just goes to, to prove that, that foreclosure uh, the foreclosure world has its own crazy rules that, that do not abide by the, the, the rules of civil procedure and the rules of due process that, that we have become accustomed to over, over the 200 and some odd year history of, of our great country. Uh, and the other uh, decision that just has come down, which is also very disturbing, is that when in fact uh, a defendant, someone who, who is a homeowner who uh, is being sued for foreclosure, proves that the party, that the bank, uh, does not have standing uh, the courts are now saying that in some cases uh, that party, that defendant, that homeowner will not be entitled to attorney fees. And it's, it, it, it's, it's a perverse situation because here the bank has wasted all the judicial resources of, of, of their lawyer, the courts, and of course the, plaintiff, the defense lawyer, and they lose. And then now they're allowed to say, oh, we made a mistake, we're sorry, the contract's void, there, we don't have standing, and therefore you're not entitled to attorney fees. And it, it, it requires a certain amount of legal calisthenics or gymnastics, contorted calisthenics and gymnastics, may I say, someone who's like a, an unbelievable a yogi or something, to come up with that kind of perverted uh, notion that when in fact you are victorious, you are the prevailing party, you're still not entitled to attorney fees because, oops, the party didn't have standing to begin with. So welcome to 2017 Florida uh, foreclosure jurisprudence. Uh, Roy Oppenheim from the trenches. Have a great day.